Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome to another episode of Chats with Orly, and today we will be talking about a hot button topic and one that really has not been covered by any media outlet yet. Um, so I recently came across some pictures and videos of a musical production of Hairspray done by the Tecnológico de Monterrey campus Hidalgo, and so I was really quite shocked to see that they had used blackface and so I want to have a chat about that today and to help me lead the conversation I have Jonathan Scott Armstrong and Julia Araujo. Uh, so Jonathan and Julia, what can you guys tell me about yourselves? I'm Jonathan Armstrong, I am Afro Salvadoran and I'm a student here for International Relations and Global Studies as well as Government at the University of Texas at Austin. I'm Julia, I am also an International Relations major I am Afro-Brazilian, and yeah. yeah. And I'm actually also an international relations major here at UT Austin. Um, and so I'll also be including statements from Krista Gonzalez and Starquan Bithia. And so just so you guys know, Krista Gonzalez is a Los Angeles-based performer, voiceover artist, and writer originally from El Paso and Dallas, Texas. She studied the exper at the Experimental Theater Wing while attending NYU's Tisch School of the Arts. Most notably, her play Mascara had a workshop reading with Teatro Vivo in Austin, Texas on February 2016 and was included in the 50 Playwright Projects list of the best unproduced Latin plays of 2017. And Star Quambithia is a really good friend of mine who I studied with six months ago in Mexico. He is an African American and Puerto Rican from New Jersey, and he is a senior at Allegheny College and a Spanish major. And for those of you guys who are not familiar with blackface, blackface, quote, was and is a form of theatrical makeup used predominantly by non-black performers to represent a caricature of a black person. The practice gained popularity during the 19th century and contributed to the spread of racial stereotypes, end quote. Okay, so my initial reaction to these pictures and videos was confusion, especially because Tec de Monterrey is a university system in which many students from all over the world choose to attend when they study abroad in Mexico, me being one of them. <clears throat> And the fact that it's a university, a college institution, that should be aware of the nuances surrounding blackface in general, um, I just think that is very ignorant from them to do. And so my second reaction was anger, and so I made a Facebook post about it. And so in my original post, I included the pictures that I saw on Instagram and Facebook, and the user who they belonged to promptly asked me to take them down, which I did, but not before adding the following comment. So, the comment said, it's just an effing musical. In Mexico, we do not have a racist problem, but it was necessary to remark the skin situation during the 60s to make people understand how big that deal was. We are not in the US, so we do not have a problem with that because as you should know, African people arrive in Mexico during the 16th century, so we accept that part of the culture. And so, it's very interesting too because I had another friend who was also a student at Tec de Monterrey, but in the campus of Querétaro, and he said something along the lines of, I don't really see a problem with it. From what I understand, blackface is when you leave a space around the lips to emphasize big lips or use bright red, lips, bright, bright red lipstick to do that. I think they didn't do it in a mocking way. I think they did it respectfully. So, and while I don't feel appropriate to show you guys, the audience, the pictures I'm referring to since they do not belong to me, um, although they were posted on two social medias, I will share them with them. So, that's cool. And so those are supposed to be pictures of uh, the character Motormouth. And so in hearing the comment and in seeing the pictures, I mean, what are your initial thoughts? Do you, I can go first if you want. Um, in that comment especially, I think it's um, almost goofy that he would say that they had a responsibility to remark the skin situation of the time as if they're aren't black people in Mexico that can play these parts? I don't know, I think it's silly that we resort to blackface to showcase racist issues in the US in the 60s. I don't know, it's just goofy to me. Yes, uh, I have a similar train of thought as well. Um, one of the things is uh, he mentioned that they'd like to acknowledge the colonial legacy of slavery um, that has existed as a part of the culture, 
However, I think that there's a difference between acknowledging that and then also choosing to try to represent that yourself if you don't belong to that legacy or if you were not affected by that legacy in the same way as Afro-descendants were in Mexico. Um, so personally, I find this to be quite offensive. And then I think that also, as Julia said, that there probably were um, black students and black people available to represent their own narratives instead of these um, fair-skinned students. Yeah, and um, I mean, have you, have any of you guys um, traveled to either Mexico or other parts of Latin or Central America yourselves? And if you have, what have been your experiences like navigating uh, those spaces as Afro-Latino people? So I've never been to Mexico, um, but I did study abroad in Cuba, and then I've been to Brazil. Um, and I, it's really, easy to fall into this whole like afro erasure mm -hmm. um this like latinidad like everyone like we're all viva la raza or yeah. whatever and um kind of erase these histories um and you can see that just walking through the streets of these places so um for someone to say that mexico even though i haven't been i can assume based on its mm -hmm. history um has no racism uh, it's just Wrong. <laughs> right. What about you? I um, have traveled to Mexico and Central America. I was very young when I traveled to Central America, so I don't have a lot of memories um, centered around that. But in terms of Mexico, both in Mexico and with um, my experiences with my friends' parents from Mexico, I have noticed that um, they do have a tendency to not acknowledge that I am a member of the Latinx community. Um, they have a tendency to not assume that I am related to my family. Many people assume that I'm either adopted, that I don't speak Spanish, um, and it's very difficult for them to acknowledge my presence and acknowledge my existence as somebody that belonged to the community. And so I really wanted to dissect this user's comment more, um, specifically the first one about how they accept the culture and how because they came, uh, because Africans came to Mexico during the 16th century, you know, that they accept that part of the culture. I just wanted to examine that a little bit more. So, the user is correct. Africans did arrive between the 16th and the 17th century um, as colonialism in Mexico began. And according to MexOnline.com, during that time, quote, the indigenous population became decimated by disease. I wonder why. I wonder who brought those diseases. I, I don't know. Um, and, and, to, and so, to make up for this labor shortage, African slaves were brought to Mexico to toil in sugar fields and work in underground mines." End quote. So, this is how I want to go about this. So to say that, that, you know, um, that Mexico doesn't have a racist problem because, you know, the experiences of Africans have been completely different um, than those in the U.S. Or, or because there was a different time period, um, I think that the way that Africans were, were treated when they came to Mexico is awfully similar, actually almost the same, to the experiences of Africans that came to America during those times, or even later or previous times. So I think that that statement's just very um, ignorant. And so um, going off of that, I found a video um, from their local media outlet that sh shamelessly shows blackface being done for the music, it was a promotional video. And so I found this video uh, about like four weeks ago and I looked it up again for this specific interview and now it's gone, mysteriously so. Um, and it was done by TV Azteca Hidalgo and a lot of students were being interviewed and some of them, uh, you know, playing black characters in the production were using blackface and the media outlet never even acknowledged that either. And so that video is gone, but I do have uh, screenshots that I took of the video before it was. And I also have another promotional video as well that still shows some of the characters in blackface, um, but very for, for very short periods of time. So I'm going to show them the first video, um, which again, like, is not the one I really wanted to show, um, but I have screenshots of that one. And so we're, we're, they're going to watch it first. So. so let me do this. Uh, cool. So.
Uh, and now I'm going to show them pictures of the original video uh, that was documenting the experience of the actors in Hairspray that was taken down um, because nobody can see that anymore. Nobody can see it. But I, I took screenshots, and screenshots last forever. So uh, here you guys go. So, you know, as you can see in some of these pictures, you know, this is like while the musical is like going on, you know, um, and yeah, you can see so many of the actors there are, you know, indiscriminately just using blackface. And mind you, this and my biggest issue with this is that this was covered by like um, a chain of their local of, of their media outlet, TV Azteca. So TV Azteca is one of the biggest television networks in Mexico. And so their station in Hidalgo, Mexico, was the one that did basically like a small documentary of it. So, you know, um, I think the fact that like this is being so normalized is very, very problematic. And the fact that, n you know, nobody is really commenting on it and that people are still justifying their use, uh, specifically the people from Mexico, I think that's super problematic as well. And yeah, so I wanted to get you guys' thoughts on this. Like, what are your thoughts on this? And and why do you think like the you know Mexican media like Debe Azteca did not think through the fact that they were recording students in blackface, or even that the that the directors did not realize that, or maybe they did. You know, I, my assumption is that they knew exactly what was going on because of the next thing we're going to discuss. Um, but yeah, but what are you guys' thoughts on this? Um, first hand, one of the things that I felt is I just don't feel that this is an adequate representation of um, of the black community, of the black identity in any sense, and I think that it's a lot more than just, you know, a darker skin tone um, that's being plastered over your face. Um, in terms of the decision to continue doing this or why didn't they think about it, I think that there's like a dis there's a disparity in the experiences of the actors and of people whose real lived experience as Afro Latinos um, exists in the world today, and when you you know it's one thing to be able to put on a mask and to be able to paint your face a certain color and to just do that for the sake of a production, but when in doing that you have had none of your culture um, taken away from you and nobody else is attempting to represent you. And so after the production you're able to remove that from yourself um, and to go on with your lives, but for real Afro-Latinos and for real um, Afro-descendants around the world, um, they don't have the privilege of getting to take off their makeup. They don't get to escape, you know, the forms of discrimination that were um, present during this time period and present today. So I think that it's perhaps a lot easier for them to not think about um, the consequences of their actions or the implications that their actions have because it is of no, it doesn't take anything away from them, but um, it takes a lot away from Afro descendants. Yeah. What about you, Julia? What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, this one in particular, the one of the man, um, stands out to me. Um, yeah. Mainly going back to what we were talking about with the comment, the previous comment, mm -hmm. about it being done in, in good taste, or right. like a respectful form of blackface. Um, because uh, the commenter had mentioned yeah. that there wasn't like the red lips. Or yeah, like exactly. Whatever. And I mean, this is just like. Um, it's just in such, I can't, I can't even fathom how blackface can be done in good taste um, when it's like the whole point of blackface is to be a caricature and to be um, just essentially making fun of an entire race of people like that's from its birth what it is. Um, so yeah, it's just it's crazy to me that you would even consider this like a possible, like you would even consider that there be a possibility of blackface done respectfully. Exactly. And